Hi, I'm Louise from Hawke's Bay Regional Council and today we're going to be talking to you about intensive winter grazing. Intensive winter grazing is the grazing of forage crops by stock, including sheep, between the 1st of May and the 30th of September each year. And new rules will be coming into effect in November 2022. Intensive winter grazing is just cultivated forage crops. It does not include pastoral grazing. Hi, I'm Kate from the Regional Council and I'm here today to talk to you about intensive winter grazing. Today we're going to run you through slope and how to measure that, uh, identifying critical source areas or CSAs as they're commonly referred to, and uh, management of pugging. So these intensive winter grazing regulations are part of the government's essential fresh water package which they announced in September uh, 2020. The permitted activity standards relate to the risks associated with intensive winter grazing. So there's a permitted activity standard around slope, around management of those critical source areas and most importantly around distance to waterways. So distance to waterways for your intensive winter grazing activity needs to be a minimum of five metres. The pathways for farmers uh, to achieve compliance with these intensive winter grazing regulations are that their practice meets the permitted activity standards or once the freshwater farm plan pathway is available, using that in some instances and in some cases a resource consent may be required. So here's a, an example of a really simple way to measure slope within the paddock because it's one of the permitted activity standards for intensive winter grazing. Intensive winter grazing in regards to slope is measured at a maximum of 10 degrees over any 20 metre stretch of the paddock. So what we've done today is we've put some electric fencing tape and some electric fencing standards out over a 20 metre length and then we've got this set to 10 degrees. It's really easy to measure what 10 degrees is. All smartphones have measurement apps on them that you can use once you've got something like this set up to see whether your maximum slope is over 10 degrees. So I've got the measurement app here open on my phone. It's something you can download on, on any smartphone. And I turn it round and I'm going to line up the top of my phone with the top of the tape to check the measurement. And that shows that tape's 10 degrees. Part of the intensive winter grazing regulations has a focus on critical source areas or CSAs as they're known for short. Critical source areas are an area within a paddock where water can accumulate, so it's things like gullies, swales or depressions where water comes from surrounding slopes, especially during areas of higher rainfall. Uh, if these have a connection to a surface water body or the potential to transport water to a surface water body, then they're considered a critical source area. So the reason protection of critical source areas is so important is because they're a part of the landscape that can potentially lose a lot of, of nutrients and sedimentation runoff from intensive winter grazing activities. Protecting these areas um, means the, the effects of intensive winter grazing are minimised. So even if water only runs in that area um, a couple of times a year, it's still considered a critical source area. When you're intensively grazing over the winter time, that is the, the time of the year where you're more likely to have water in those areas. So if there's any subsurface drains within your intensive winter grazing area, things like mole or tile drains, they're considered critical source areas. So they're not considered a waterway, you don't need a buffer distance, but they have to be managed as you'd manage a critical source area. So that means leaving them uncultivated and ungrazed when planting and feeding your winter crop. Protecting critical source areas and, and leaving them in pasture helps trap nutrients and reduces the risk of sedimentation and nutrient runoff. So as an example of a critical source area, we've got um, two images shown here. The before photo shows that intensive winter grazing was undertaken and the critical source area was grazed as part of that. You'll see it as the depression through the middle of the paddock and then there's a stream just to the left of that paddock that that water could end up in. Uh, the photo on the other side of the image shows what they did with the critical source area this year. They didn't cultivate it and put it into that crop, they left it in pasture and then when they grazed that winter crop off they protected that area from the stock. They fenced it out while they were grazing it. Hopefully you can see the, the difference here, leaving that critical source area in pasture and not grazing it over the winter period when you're grazing that crop means that pasture strip can act as a filter for any nutrient runoff from grazing of that winter crop. So the next area we're going to talk about is pugging. 
So pugging in the intensive winter grazing regulations isn't a specific measurement but it's about taking all practical steps to manage the effects of that pugging. There's also animal welfare aspects associated with pugging. No one wants to see um, negative effects on animals' welfare from having uh, pugging in an intensive winter grazing paddock. Pugging occurs around water troughs and uh, gateways because they're, they're areas that the stock congregate back and forth to a lot. They're areas of concentration. Because they're areas of concentration and pugging, that also means they're like, nutrient hotspots. There's a few good management practices that you may have seen out and about. Things like back fencing, giving the stock long, narrow breaks, uh, having portable troughs that you move with the stock as they move into their next break of the crop. So unique to Hawke's Bay is that we've also got a regional feedlot rule. So one of the good management practices you can do to reduce pugging is back fencing. If you back fence feeding out your winter crop, you also will not trigger our regional feedlot rule. Our role at the Regional Council is to help you apply these new intensive winter grazing rules. To help us identify at-risk properties, the Regional Council will be using satellite imagery from previous years to ascertain where intensive winter grazing has been taking place in the past. If you already hold a resource consent with Hawke's Bay Regional Council that is not for production land use, then you will require new consent if you do not meet the permitted activity rules. If you are located in the Tuki Tuki catchment and you already have a production land use consent for a den exceeding subcatchment, your intensive winter grazing consent can be wrapped into one. So where to from here? The Regional Council will be working with rural professionals and consultants to assist them in interpreting the rules. Further information is also available on our Regional Council website, which has lots of guidance information for you, or you can contact one of our helpful staff. To get more information on these options, you can go to HBRC's website and search hashtag IWG.